everybody, my name is Derek Ree. I'm a private chef and today I'm here with Desire Company. We're gonna be making a veggie bowl with seared salmon on the side. So all you're gonna need is a knife, a cutting board, a blender, whatever set of pans you have on hand. And for the ingredients, we're gonna be using some Tuscan kale, some scallions, ginger, garlic, your jasmine rice, and some salmon. First thing you wanna do is we're gonna get this rice and go ahead and rinse this off. We're gonna do this so we can get rid of some of that excess starch. If not, we're gonna find that our rice is gonna be all gloopy and kind of sticks together a lot. So it's very crucial you do this. So if you follow me, we're just gonna go ahead to the sink, add a little bit of water, and we're just gonna clean this until it runs clear. And we're just gonna bring this up to a boil and then lower it to like a medium simmer. And then eventually we're just gonna turn off the heat completely and just let it steam the rest of the way. While we bring this up to a boil and get everything going with the rice, we're gonna take care of our kale and our cauliflower and just get some of our knife cuts out of the way. That's a nice little trick for you. Just like really just grab it from the bottom, pull that first one, and then you just thoroughly just slide up. It comes out nice. When you, especially when you eat this raw, you wanna kind of just like wilt it down. And it seems a little bit weird to bruise your vegetable because that's essentially what you're doing, but you're breaking down some of those cell walls. Kale is very tough, so it can get hard to eat. So. Just kind of getting it ready, kind of squeezing it up a little bit. And this is just going to help that process. And we'll go back to this rice. You can see we're up to a boil now. Once we get there, I'm going to turn it down to a little simmer. Go ahead and grab this bowl and get this in here. And kind of rinse some of this off. Just take this to our sink and just get it rinsed off. You want to make sure you're getting off any dirt. So we're gonna go ahead and take and rinse it off. And that should be pretty good right there. Take this back over here. So what you wanna do at this point is just kind of roll it up like a burrito. Roll it up, roll it up. Doesn't have to be super tight, but as long as it's rolled up like this, so this way they're all gonna be very similar in size because we had them rolled up already. And just take it nice and slow. Just one cut, two cut, and just keep on slowly backing up your claw. The rock chop is an important culinary skill because it's a speed chop. It's something that's very big in the Western kitchen. Get some of our kale in here. All right, so for this cauliflower, this is gonna be the base of our roasted cauliflower stock. It's gonna taste like cauliflower and it's gonna taste like, you know, your subtle other ingredients that goes along with it. At this point, I'm gonna half it. Just gonna go ahead and take that, as you can see, is the core of the entire cauliflower. This part is our most fibrous part. So typically this is always discarded, but if you're doing something like a soup, maybe you wanna, you can cook it down a little bit longer and that way since it's being pureed, you're not gonna have to worry about all of that tough, kind of hard to chew, normal fibrous cauliflower stem. Like we're just gonna go with that natural curvature of this. All right, so now where we are in the recipe, I'm just gonna kind of finish out chopping up some of these scallions. We're just gonna proceed with the same things we were doing before. And kind of give it a nice little chop. A good test to know that your knife is properly sharp is if you cut one of these scallions or if you cut some chives, they should make a nice round. Like, let's see if I can grab you. Kind of like so and shouldn't really just squeeze all the way down. You can kind of get close in on it. You can see all of the individual nice little rounds without really bruising it. Kind of scoop it up, use your knife to guide. And this is why this knife being an all-purpose knife, it's you can do whatever you want in the kitchen, break down some, some lobster, crabs, or you can use it to even pick things up. That chef knife has a wide enough body to kind of just do this. And I'm just gonna set this to the side and we're gonna do our garlic and ginger as well. I'm gonna go ahead and clean out my cutting board. At this point, we're gonna do a nice deep cleaning because we're gonna now tap our salmon. We wanna make sure we have a clean cutting board. We don't want excess oils of garlic and scallions to be seasoned in our salmon. We wanna taste our salmon as is. So we're gonna get this nice and clean and ready to go and I'll be back. 
So what we have here is some fresh salmon, Atlantic. I use this because it's one of the more sustainable kind of salmon. It's one that's not as overfished and it's just perfect for this dish. So we're gonna go by the belly, do a nice little slit, tuck our fingers in, and just try to get the blade as flat as possible as we cut. Just keep cutting, get the blade flat. And once you get to this point where it's all the way parallel onto the cutting board, it's just a breeze walk now at that point. Just hold tight on the skin. Just guide the knife all the way through until you get to that end part. So at this step is where we're gonna allow our salmon to come up to room temperature. We're gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes or so. And in that meantime, we're gonna actually go back to our cauliflower and then eventually back to our kale. So at this point, I'm just gonna take this to the back and let it sit to come up to temperature. That way everything cooks nice and smoothly all the way through. For the cauliflower, we're gonna use our widest pan. This way that we can not overcrowd the pan and make sure that we can actually get some type of color on it. Okay, so with these stainless steel pans, it's important to get the pan nice and hot before you add your oil to it. I'll say right now, this is a good time that we can actually add our oil in. So we can go ahead with a little bit of grape oil, canola oil also works. I wouldn't use olive oil in this instance just because it has a low smoke point, so it's gonna instantly burn. So just add a nice little layer. You can see it kind of immediately going all around. I'm gonna grab our cauliflower and just gonna add it in there. Also a good time to use our tweezers that we got so that way you don't have to be all in there too much. You can kind of just move those around. I'm gonna go throw a little bit of dashi. I'm just gonna add that to it. I'm gonna pull it off the heat. Kind of so. As that dashi hit the pan, it actually pulled up all of what we call the fond. This is all the little kind of like caramelized bits that stick to the bottom of the pan. Doing it this way, it's gonna pull everything up and it's also gonna season our dish again. While we have this, picking up some of our caramelized bits and finishing its way, we're gonna actually go ahead and set our blender up, transfer everything over, and then we're gonna get our cauliflower stocks set and ready to go. So at this point, we're gonna add our lid on, get ready to blitz it up. So just tap it a little bit just to get it used to it. And I tapped it so that way I can feel how it is, how much heat's in there, if it was gonna explode. I didn't just click it and let it kind of go ahead already. So. At this point, we're gonna get our kale and start cooking that off. This looks like it's at a pretty good spot. We're gonna add our aromatics in there, follow that by our kale. So right here, this is our scallions, our ginger, our garlic, just all of our aromatics. We're just gonna go ahead and add that into the pan. Saute that up a little bit. Sweat that down. Go ahead and add our kale in. Right now, in fact, we're at a nice spot. We're gonna go ahead and season it. I take this the same way I take the rice. You don't want to season it as soon as it hits the pan. I'm gonna wait till you wilt it down a little bit because again, it's concentrating those flavors. So right now, halfway point, we're gonna go ahead and add some salt. We're gonna re-season this, so we're not gonna fully season it. Add a little bit of crushed black pepper. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and gonna take our stock. Add that through. All right, let's see where we are with that amount added. So this is what I like about the cauliflower. It's already has so much body to it. It's already thickened up and it hasn't been fully coated to kill yet. Hit it with a little bit of our white wine, our Riesling to be precise, and we don't need much of this. So add just a nice little splash. We don't want the food to be drunken, we just want to taste the reason I'm kind of sitting there in the back of the dish. So once we're at this spot, I'm gonna add a little bit of soak. 
I find that these coconut kind of flavors works very well with that ginger scallion and the sesame. Add right, just a splash of the silk. Honestly, at this point, if you wanted to, you can just finish it off with just the rice, the kale, and just get your all around vegetarian vegan bowl. Or you can take it a step further and cook off the salmon and throw that on the top, which is what we're gonna do. So let's get that started. And at this point, now that we have a nice golden brown, I'm just gonna finish in the oven for about four minutes or so. All right, so now we're gonna actually finish everything up, get everything nice and plated and ready to be eaten. So let's go ahead and take our salmon. Salmon looks nicely cooked. It's perfect. I'm gonna start off with a nice, healthy amount of rice straight in the middle. Nice little bed of rice, and we're just gonna place our salmon directly on the top. Good thing about our tweezers, you can just take that and kind of get you just like so. Here, we're gonna go ahead and grab some of that creamed kale. I'm just gonna drape it nice and over the side. So, our salmon is still a big part of this dish. I don't wanna completely cover it, and plus, we have that nice skin. And last, but certainly not least, we're just gonna finish this off with some of our fresh micros. In this case, crimson. We're gonna go with our smaller tweezers and kind of just add as many of these as you like. I like to think of this as a whole nother vegetable component. So I'm just gonna add a good amount right here. And our chili, that's right in the front. This will just give us a little bit of that spice. I'm really just going for mainly the oil for this part. Adds a nice contrast to the dish because we eat with our eyes first. And it's also just delicious just to kind of Add on there to the top, and we're done. And last but not least, of course, the most important step, we enjoy the food now, because this is gonna be good, and I'm gonna go ahead and dig it. Mm. Yeah, this is like my favorite thing to eat, honestly. I really could eat this like every single day. Got some of the spice, I'm getting the fruitiness of the Calabrian chili. The meatiness of the fish is just perfectly cooked through, as you can see on this side. Just kind of just flakes apart just perfectly. Look at that, that's beautiful. And this rice is delicious, nice and filling. I get a lot of the cauliflower notes in it, the broccoli. I'm just gonna finish this off, no more sharing for me. So hopefully you guys produce yours and it tastes just as good. Uh, kind of gonna get out of here and finish eating this along, so have fun.